the one thing you have to do as a character or an actor is get people to like what you do. You know, people go, oh, everybody likes what you do, as though it's something bad. But to be liked on television is a very, very difficult thing. You know, to, to, to be cared about on television. Like, you know, when, when you're acting, when you put yourself in, on that screen, it's like meeting a person for the first time. Within five minutes, you either like them or you don't. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robson Green and his top table. Why do people like what I do? I think it's, it's the writing. The writing is everything. From Tom Hadaway to Leonard Barrett to Alan Plater to uh, uh, Lenny to um, Michael Chaplin, Sid Chaplin, um, Lucy Gannon, Paul Abbott. I mean, what a gallery of writers I've been privileged to work with. Robson is deeply passionate about writers from this area and we're extraordinarily lucky to have three of the most wonderful writers all sitting here at the moment. Tom Hadaway, Sean Prendergast, and Michael Chapman. Tom, if I could start with you, do you have any... Absolutely. Any recollections about Robson? Recollections about Robson? Well, I remember the first play that he did with me was called, uh, what the hell was it called again? <laughs> well, Francie Niggle, uh, Francie Niggle. And uh, I remember an, an elderly lady came to see me. She was from Canada. She'd been a jolly little woman. And she said, uh, we, we were introducing Robson to her. This is a most wonderful lad. He's created a sensation in this area and it's something very special. And she says, well, I've never heard of him. <laughs> Robert Robson won the scene. He says, well, Henny, I've never heard of either. <laughs> so that makes them both alike. He was, you know, that sort of guy who could take a situation and make capital out of it on the spur of the moment. A wonderful man. Thank you, Tom. Now, um, Mr. Chaplin created Grafters. For a writer, it was, it was a kind of dream, really, to write for two actors who were perfectly in sync um, in the way that they worked and the way in which they just inhabited those brothers. I mean, you just believed in them, absolutely. And, and in their journeys, uh, and in their hopes, and their, you know, their, their fears. And uh, this is, I think, something about you, but it's also true of Robson, that there is just a sort of inner truth to what he's doing. Um, he makes this real emotional connection with, with people on the, on the screen. Um, and there is this natural warmth of the people that you find in this region that uh, communicates itself across the screen and also a wonderful sense of comedy. Plans. You should have waited. They're gonna go mad with you. They're gonna go mad. You should have waited. And I'd have given you a hand. Done a good job. <laughs> Was that a joke? And the person who finished off the first series is my dear mate Sean Prendergast here. So I'll give the mic to you because you can do half an hour standing up on your own. No, uh, well, no. I was acting in Soldier, Soldier. And he'd already been on the gig. And uh, I turned up in the morning, and it was a Litchfield barracks. And there was about 200 young 16-year-old, 17-year-old squaddies. It was 6 o'clock in the morning. And uh, they were standing in their underpants on the parade ground in the rain, being shouted at by a sergeant major. And uh, Robson just said, that could be us. <laughs> Robson's always absolutely understood that that he's, he's, he's lucky, as well as being hugely talented, and he is enormously talented, I mean, incredible to write for and to act with, incredible. But he's always understood also that, he, that it's something which 
it, you know, for a lot of people, it doesn't happen. It is much easier now to make it onto television because people will do anything to be famous. And we have this thing that I perceive as a disease called reality te television. Anybody can get on. But I don't think anybody can um, be economic and provide a character that people will follow in a story that we tell on the television. That's a lot harder. People often ask me, do I believe in love at first sight? And for me, at the age of five, the answer was yes. I was in love with our television set. Because for me, television was a window into the world of storytelling, of American gangster films, of Ealing comedies, Tom and Jerry, and of course, football. And it was a world I always wanted to be part of. Well, not the football in a bit, because I was told by my PE teacher that Robson Green plays football with a confidence that is wholly unwarranted. <laughs> Instinctively, I've always known when to move on. For example, I knew when the singing had to stop. <laughs> it was after I watched an episode of Animal Hospital, and a woman brought in two guinea pigs. And guess what they were called? <laughs> Rolf and Andrew. And Rolf Harris said to the woman, what's wrong with your guinea pigs? And she said, it's Robson. He's not right. <laughs> and I have to say, the Robson guinea pig was looking a bit suspect. Anyway, they gave the Robson guinea pig an injection. And it died. <laughs> and I knew that was a sign, an omen even. I knew we had to stop. I am profoundly honored to receive this award tonight. I am fiercely proud to be a Geordie. Newcastle, like the river Tyne it sits on, runs through my veins. And I do know that the most ordinary life can be extraordinary. Not because of what we are given, but because of what we are able to achieve. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Robson Green. It's a very strange thing, isn't it? getting applause for what you do. Very few people get it. And it's just, you know, we should all get it. Everybody likes a bit of applause. When no one else can understand me When everything I do is wrong I always believed that Robson would be a big star in America. He's a very, very, very convincing actor. I'd love to see him do um, some musical theatre or, or film because, you know, he has a fantastic singing voice. He's what, he, he's what you might call in the old days a triple threat. I think Robson will be on our screens, you know, until he's 70 or 80. He's got it, hasn't he? People love to see guys who aren't afraid to say that they love each other, you know? And um, we were never afraid to do that. I hope he knows that I always watch him when I know that he's on and I'm, I'm always impressed and always delighted and very fortunate to uh, call myself a friend. I just think he's a great ambassador for the, for the North East, which I hope, which we all try to be. It's very important to all of us from the North East, with the background that we have, with the live theatre company, that we all hopefully are ambassadors for the North East and I think that he's one of our best ones. Going back to that boy of seven. What may be perceived as an ordinary tale of a young lad from a pit village is quite an extraordinary tale of triumph or of adversity. And you know, I am part of an extraordinary story and, uh, it, and my story goes on.